welcome to The People's Art. My name's Melissa Latouche and I'll be looking after the show while Neil's away. He has reminded me to let you guys know to keep on sending that work in because we enjoy receiving it. And if we haven't exhibited it yet, not to worry because we do plan to in the future. Now, today's guest we have is Richard Lansley and he is a artist from Hampshire, UK. Hello Richard, it's good to have you here. Hi, thanks for having me here. <laughs> so you describe your art as a mixture between graffiti style and comic book style. Yes. Now, could you explain to me about your background in art and how you were led to this style? Yeah, definitely. Um, well, I've always, from childhood, had the, the comic book inspiration there. That's something that I've had from a very, very young age and um, street art seemed to just be all around me from when I was growing up. I couldn't get away from it at the time, which has really had a big influence on what I do. Um, I studied art for two years at college and then at university. And um, when I got there, in the sort of the educational aspects, it kind of, they discouraged that kind of style of artwork on me. It was very much straight away nip that in the bud. You know, cartoons, comic, illustration, that type of work is not what we're going to do here. Mm. I'm going to move away from that. So I spent two years, three years of just studying how they taught me to study and, you know, and the, the, the traditional style of painting. Um, but then as soon as I got out of that period, I went straight on to doing my own stuff and brought back really my true love, which is the, the comic book style. So. Thank you. Mm. So from your um, <coughs> paintings, what, what inspires you to do these types of art? Um, everything around me, very much pop culture inspired stuff. So TV, film, some music. Um, again, my roots are the comic book style. I've, I always loved comic books. I never was much of the story yeah. fan, but I loved the actual, the visual images. And I'll just sit there as a kid and just look at the images over and over again. So that was a big part for me. But yeah, now it is really TV inspired, film inspired, a little bit of cartoon, traditional Disney inspired stuff. So. Yeah. What type of films are you into? Um, I love the uh, horror genre of films. I love sort of the traditional sort of love story films as well. I love a sort of mixture of the two as well, which is kind of what I like to project in my work, is a little mixture of love and horror. So. This process, how, how do you start with a painting? Explain a bit about the process of art for me, please. Okay, well for me personally, I don't always have an idea in my head of how it's going to start. I always find if I do have a plan, it never goes the way that it should go. So with me, it could even start with just a shape or a colour or just a splash of paint on something. And I'll just build up from there and just go and just freestyle it for a few hours or a few days until something comes from it or mm. visually it looks well. So. so how have people reacted to your art? Um, in a positive way, um, as much as possible. Um, Children especially love it. I don't know what it is. They, I think it's all the bright colours that sort of draws them towards it. And they sort of straight away they see the colours and then they look a bit caref more careful and then they see it's not always as attractive as, as what the, the colours bring out with them. But yeah, the bright colours especially because I'm a big fan of big, bold, bright colours. And uh, I think that really, really draws your eye from anyone to it. So. Okay, and what kind of reactions were you hoping for when you when you created these pieces? All positive so far, which is great. Um, I think a lot of people relate to it because that a lot of my art is iconic images of people that people see every day on the TV or in films. So there's that. It's always really bright colours as well. So I think it's quite eye-catching. Um, children especially love the, the, the bright colours. They get sort of drawn into that. Then they look a bit more closely and see the, the subject matter, which isn't always as, as bright as the colours. But Yeah, that's yeah. what I was actually um, attracted to, was the bright colours then. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, very much. Tell yeah. us a bit more about the colours that you use. Um, well, I'm, I love colour theory. Um, so for me, it's all about big, bold, bright colours. I use a lot of pinks, I love a lot of pinks and purples and turquoises mm. at the moment anyway. Mm. Um, it's all a learning curve for me, so I'm constantly changing and moving things around and trying new things all the time. But yeah, I love colour in particular, so it's a big thing for me. And what are one of your most inspiring creations? Can you talk us through um, one of your creations? Um, yeah, well, I love doing things on all different types of platforms, so paper, walls, cardboard canvases. Um, I, 
done a few bits recently on music note paper right. that I found um, just to try something different really. Um, I normally like very minimalistic work, white backgrounds and not much, not much else to it apart from the centerpiece and now I'm using so many different aspects like I say like music paper and bits to, bits to change things up. So, so yeah. what, what moved you onto this sheet music? Um, just looking for something different and um, trying to find something that would yeah, be a bit more different and eye-catching and you see something and you think, okay, that's a bit of paper and actually you see it's, it's more than just a doodle on a bit of paper. There's, there's some meaning there behind it, um, inspired by music in particular, which is a big thing for me as well. So, yeah. Good. Mm. So what are, what are you working on? What kind of um, mediums are you using for your painting? Um, at the moment, it, it is the, the music paper. Um, also, big bits of wood for me at the moment as well. I'm finding wood everywhere is... is kind of cheaper and kind of a, an easier way to get than just buying nice quality paper. So I buy a big lump of wood, I'll saw it out myself, I'll make it usable and then I'll use that. So. And what kind of message are you hoping that your paintings will convey? Well, it is really a, a view on, on culture today and TV culture and film culture and cartoon culture and how it is just there in your face all the time. and. Um, it isn't always as, as, as innocent as message as, as people first think it is. So there is that, that aspect there of you know, look a bit deeper, see what's really there, you know, and that's what comes up with. What is really there then for, for you? What is really there when you look? Well, when you take a, a big cartoon corporation, for example, and you, you, you realise that they are more than just trying to create an image for someone or a film for someone or TV and actually it is a business at the end of the day you know and people are making mon money from it and um, you know putting messages in that you don't always see unless you look carefully into them so that's really what this is about is making it more obvious to people to see actually what is out there. Mm. So, so yeah. for you what is the most important thing that you'd like to communicate through your work? Um, I think I want people to, 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 to look at my work and, and make their own mind up of what they see from it really. I don't want to throw something right in, the, in their face. Um, I want them to see a bit. If, if, there's, if they like a message or if they see something in there, great. If they just think it's visually a nice piece to look at, that's great as well. But I don't want to be one of those people to sit up there and say, this is what I was meaning to get from this. This is what I want people to, people to take from it away. So it's really how you interpret it yourself. So I like to keep it as. Hmm. Wicked. Good. Um, so, your work, is it mainly gallery work that you get or do you do street work or is it on the street? Um, I do street art, but I've never been a street artist as such. Okay. I've never been one to sort of plaster my work up on walls or graffiti. I'm not a graffiti artist. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't call myself a graffiti artist. Um, but yeah, gallery shows. I had my first solo show a couple of years ago, my first proper big one. So, yeah, trying to get it out there, just any platform I can, online. Um, in shows, group shows, any way possible really. So. How easy is it to promote your work? I mean, and get out there in the galleries? It's tough. You have to kind of, it is a split of your day of actually creating work and then promoting your work. I'd mm -hmm. say it's almost a 50-50 split mm -hmm. nowadays for me. So yeah, it's tough. You just got to keep your, your ear to the ground and, and take any opportunity that comes up nowadays, I think. So yeah, it's really looking what's out there and keep on fighting. You get all those rejection letters all the time, you know, yeah. saying no, not right now, not right now, but you just got to fight through that and just keep That's trying. True. Yeah. But so, um, if you had to give advice to an up, up and coming artist, um, what kind of advice would you give them in pursuing? Keep trying, keep going, keep doing it for yourself, keep doing it for people who love what you do and maybe buy what you do if, if that's great, but just yeah. keep trying it. It's, it's a long, hard struggle. It's not a journey that's, you know, if you're gonna sit there and go, I'll be an artist, I'll, um, mm. I'll do something. You know, two, three years down the line, you have gotta keep on that motivation, keep going for yourself and doing it for what you wanna do. It's easy for me because it's my therapy in a way. So I would do it if no one saw what I did. I would just do it because it's what I like to do and it helps me personally, so, yeah. yeah. Do you think um, the gallery route is a, is a good option to go down? I mean, has um, it been a good option for you? Yeah, I think so. I think galleries are becoming more and more open to what can be out there right now. Um, it used to be very traditional art, well-known artists, and you know that's all you get. Nowadays, you're getting all these local or independent galleries popping up all over the place, little pop-up shops. 
and um, they're very open to try new things and really show us out there. So it's good that it's not being limited anymore. Yeah. So it's true. So you can be um, free to be creative exactly. in many small galleries nowadays. Exactly. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's just fine with them. So. So what's um, lined up for you, um, Rich, for 2014? Keep doing what I'm doing. Um, I want to try and maybe create almost like a little brand out of the art that I'm doing now yeah. and um, move on to other things, really. Um, maybe another show for this year, hopefully, um, a local one or in London. And um, just continue to, to improve myself internally as well as showing people what, what there is. Thank you very much, Rich. Now we're off to see some of your views on the streets. When it becomes offensive, or when it's uh, something uh, that you find difficult, anybody can appreciate, yes. Oh God, I think uh, now it's such a fine yeah, line. Yeah, there is such a fine line, because like sometimes people would say like, they'd, like a pile of poo is art like you know it's it's kind of ridiculous but um i don't know i don't know that's a really hard question yeah that is um hard especially now in like contemporary art like anything goes at the moment i mean there's some things that i wouldn't really I, I guess, agree with but yeah it depends on what you see as art really i think it's a natural gift personally if if you're taking it just as a on a painting or drawing perspective then it's a gift a bit like music, I think. Um. Oh, it's absolutely natural. I think it's a mixture of both. I always believe that uh, a certain level of creativity is in the person, and I think the other part of it is the way you recognize through training and through exposure and other you know, means that you have it in you and you improve. But it's a form of expression that is in innate within a person. It's great to hear some of your views. We'll be back with Rich in a bit later. But right now, we're going to watch a video that someone has sent in. I'm mainly interested in drawing cartoons, animating them, um, sound design. Oh, well, and that's all good. But he you didn't have let me to, finish his stupid... You have to have something else to make money for you. My daughter is an artist, but she works in the mines now. That's depressing. Oh, she does study art at the same time, though. You see, most artists don't make money until they're quite <coughs> old. So you're better off just doing something you don't like so much until then. Right, so you're saying I should give some money to a school and get them to teach me stuff I can teach myself and then go work my ass off in an area that has nothing to do with my joys in life while on the side do my art and maybe eventually by the time I'm dead I'll start making a living off of it. Yes! <laughs> Fall for the same trap everyone else has fallen for. Conform, 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 you worthless human slave. We're just going off to a short break, but we'll be back with Rich later and we'll get to see some more of your work. Welcome back to The People's Art. And right now we're going to go and see some of your work. There's a road Not many travel A doorway masqueraded by a dream Endless sea Ocean or galaxy And our hearts Growing by knowing that something we can never fully see. There's no limit to what we can be now. Here, holding on to nothing at all. What you want is what you're giving. Holding on to nothing at all. Tear the veil and start receiving There's a song No one but you can sing A melody of music from the spheres Fearless tears 
Order from chaos, secret heart Holding on to nothing at all What you want is what you're giving Holding on to nothing at all Love will find you, start believing Holding on to nothing at all What you want is what you're giving Holding on to nothing at all Love will find you, start believing All we ever had to do Was fall in love with life itself All we ever had to fear When nothing more than lies All we ever had to do Was fall in love with life itself All we ever had to fear When nothing more than lies All we ever had to do What brings you to see me? Well, I thought I'd bring my drums by to have a little session with you. That's great, man. What are we Hey, hi. I'm Gary Campbell. I uh, create these exhibitions, so I create the Midas Touch. I guess the idea behind the project is just giving giving young people and local creators the opportunity to showcase their work. Um, we had an open application process that everybody applied, and yeah, we just asked them to respond to the theme. And as an antidote to the negative press of the town, the theme was um, celebrating the multiculturalism of the town and exploring working class culture. So those are the themes and we had a huge amount of responses and then we whittled all the artists down to artists who responded better to the theme or we really liked the style of their work. The exhibition's at the Edge Nightclub. The opening night was here and then it was on for three days from 11 till 4. I think the opening night was a huge success. Like we had to open early and we had to close late. I think we got like 300 people through the door, 350 maybe. So that was just proof of that there was a thirst for art here and there is a thirst for people to come and look at the local community's talent. Have you been into the ladies' toilets yet? Uh, no, I don't. I don't have a have one of them. I can't do that. You can. can. You can have a free permit to go in there with yeah. exclusive um, access. I might be able to get some good footage and like, sell this footage online. Excuse me, do you mind if we go outside and There you go. I've got a good excuse now. There you go. Oh, oh. <laughs> I think, uh, yeah, it was a long five months coming, to be honest, like setting everything up and liaising with everyone, but it was more successful than I could have ever hoped for. Or, and I feel quite emotional about the whole thing, so yeah, it's really good. That's good. Lovely. It's too warm, man. It's too warm. It was like a hugely positive thing for the town, and everyone involved was. As there's huge amounts of positive responses, and lots of people are contacting me asking how they can get in contact with the artist. So hopefully, it was good exposure for them, but also it's just put us on the map and shown like there is great art here, and also we're going to start showcasing it, and hopefully that will build up build up the town and build up what people think of the town as well we can start to work on that negative reputation. Basically we, we took some screens uh, and we inserted them into furniture uh, and then we put things on the screens that kind of you know contrast so you kind of got to look at multiple different things at the same time you can choose one or choose to look at five at once. We was kind of going for that only fools and horses, old granddad who watches like three TVs at once sort of effect. There's different things that happen. Some of them have got sound as well, so you can keep an ear out for that while looking. Well, it's like you're using these different materials and yeah. you've got like the paper over the face and you've got the hat on. It's like how, how we all feel sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Like, more projects in the pipeline. I wanted to combine sort of logos that we're very familiar with, like the Wilkinson logo, Primark logo, some cash for gold flyers going on, but put them in to quite a grand dress. So it's a bit of a contradiction. 
and obviously we've got a website tmtexhibition.blogspot.co.uk You know, ever since I found out there was such a thing called a colored girl, an evil woman, a nag, or a bitch, I really tried not to be that. Leave bitterness in somebody else's cup. You come to someone to love you without these deep and nasty smelling scars from Liar, or, or leave you in the street screaming full of lunatics. Lunatics whispering here with all of that. I didn't have any of that for you. I gave you the joy I found and I found joy. And then there's this woman. And who, who you left three or four times after you put my heart at the bottom of your shoe. You just walked back to where you hurt and I, and I didn't have anything. I had nothing. So I went to somewhere where someone would have something for me and none of them were you. You know, there's a real dead lover for you here now. Cause I don't know anymore. I don't know how to keep my own face. convinced that good girls have no right to sorrow. I lived for you. I lived for you. But I did it for myself. I did it for myself because I can't. I couldn't stand it. I couldn't stand being colored. Okay? I couldn't stand being colored and sorry at the same time. My name is Kiana Zamani. I did this uh, beautiful, fantastic exhibition with Ashley Caldini. Hi, my name is Ashley. <laughs> this is a collaboration installation that I did with Kiana Zamani. It's titled Pass It On. It came up from an idea that uh, one that was sitting a bus and also people looking to the sides of the window on the bus and then they would look at you but the eyes would roll up around you and they would go to the other side and I thought wouldn't it be a good idea to create a card that could make them happy and make them pass it on and the idea is that um, it should make you feel better about yourself and then you have to find someone else to pass on that good feeling to. These are all the photographs that we decided and chose for this installation. There's about 300 photographs so far. We're hoping to get 5,000. And each one is paired with a quotation that serves the image above it. We also decided to put um, illuminating materials in the exhibition. We wanted to use transparent and a luminescent materials to create an environment that speaks for enlightening and meditation and uh, an uplifting sort of feeling and sense. Oh, beautiful ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk about this amazing secret geometry that me and Ashley did on the ground. The flower is a uh, flower of life, you guys can research that and see what it is. And also there's an infinity sign in the middle of it. We believe that everybody is infinite and we come here to have physical experiences and that's the most beautiful part of life and every experience is good. We are kind of finishing up and uh, for a couple of days we have been having bleeding fingers. We 
because of tying up the balloons, Ashley had it much worse than I did. Action. Okay, I picked this quote. It's from Abraham Hicks, who's one of my favorite. I love her so much. Okay, so it says, to stand in your own now, looking forward with deliberate intent and anticipation of what is to come is infinitely more satisfying than to stand in your now. Now, looking back, retracting your steps as to how you got to where you are. Wait, 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 okay. Is that recording? Yeah. Are we looking good? Yeah. Good. <laughs> Still recording. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so this is one of the balloons we have in the exhibition. <laughs> Most of us think of ourselves as thinking creatures that feel, but we are actually feeling creatures that think. That's Jovel Taylor, she's amazing. Anyway, I would like to say that uh, I love you all. Uh, See you at the next exhibition. One last quotation to leave you guys with from Rumi, our favorite, and inspiration for this room. In your light, I learn how to love. In your beauty, how to make poems. You dance inside my chest where no one sees you, but sometimes I do. And that light becomes this art. <laughs> Bye.当时在我们当地就是每一个女孩子也好就是结了婚的媳妇也好每个人都要剪纸那么她是作为一个妇女娱乐的一个专门的一个就是场所要你必须这样你没有其他娱乐的场所你只能靠这个剪纸把你开心
light shine and the light shine. We're just going for a short break right now, but we'll be back with Rich and we'll discuss some more of his work. <laughs> Welcome back. Um, we're going to talk with Rich a bit more about his work. Now, um, tell me a bit about this piece and um, what's inspired you to do this. 
Okay, well, the main inspiration with this particular piece was the old 50s and 60s style cartoon characters, the Disney kind of style characters inspired in particular. So this is like our big bad wolf evil character, which I always thought was quite a sinister character yeah. anyway. Um, so I got to have a lot of fun with this, actually. I just started off just drawing the character out, painting it up all correctly, how it was done sort of originally. Mm. And then you get to get really messy with it and just sp spray paint a little, or get a water pistol and just sort of spray paint, get everything dripping down from it, all the water just sort of dripping down to go in between the colours and almost defacing the original image that that was first suggested. So, so what's this um, Disney character mm. doing here? I mean, why are you inspired by Disney characters? I think it's hard not to, well, for me personally, quite hard not to be because they are just everywhere nowadays. Not just mm. Disney, but all sort of, you know, cartoon and TV characters that are just plastered all over the place. So it's kind of an indirect message to show, you know, how they are in your face everywhere and how you can't really escape it. So it was quite hard for me not to be inspired by, mm. by what's around. Why do you turn them into evil type characters? <laughs> I think it's, um, it's showing what they really are for me. I mean, if you, you, you can watch anything and see anything you like from, you know, from TV and film and cartoons. But mm. if you really sort of pay attention to what the message is out there, sometimes it's not always as, as innocent as, as, as the colours mm. show. So. What do you feel to you is the message that's out there from Disney? Um, I think you've got to remember that they are a corporation. And, you know, as all corporations have normally one thing in mind, and that's profit and money. And, um, and there's also, there is a darker, more sinister image you come across I think from a lot of that nowadays so it's really you know make up your own mind as an adult watch something and you know sort of make up your own mind of what's really out there and yeah. what, what do you else. what kind of information do, does Disney give you I mean what do you kind of see um, I see definitely elitists um, up there on the top of sort of pyramid schemes such definitely up there from you know um, dragging people down and definitely Repressing, pe repressing people down from it. Um, there's definitely, yes, uh, undertones to it that, that could be explored further, I think. So. Mm. Okay. Um, let me see, let's explore this painting a bit more, because I see that there's a lot of different layers that you have got on here. Mm -hmm. um, so you said you dr draw this bit out perfectly, then you hose it down. Pretty much, yeah, and pretty then, much, yeah. Deface it all completely. <laughs> um, and then I'll, what happens next? Well, there's just layers and layers, so I'll do that a few times to get it looking kind of old and sort of make it seem like it's, it's, it's not as such. And then it's really the spray paint then after that. So that's all the acrylics down, all the inks are down for all the line work. Mm -hmm. And then I'll spray paint it down. I've never been a graffiti artist, and I wouldn't like to say I am. Um, so it's really just me att attempting to give it that modernised feel to it. So a lot of this is stencil work um, that I draw myself and cut out myself, um, which takes a long time sometimes to do. And then it's just having fun with it really and just like, you know, words that come up or sayings come up in my head as I'm going through it. And I'll just do colour after colour until something visually looks good colour wise and keep building it up until I get this. So you've got a character here. Um, who is this character? Is it from your influence of film? Yeah, there's a few, if you look carefully, there's a few characters in there that are sort of popped up there. Again, it's hard for me as a major film lover anyway to, to not have that as an inspiration yeah. for me. So, um, yeah, all these little characters are, are stencils that I do myself. Um, and this guy is... Machete, uh, Danny Trejo. Wicked. Yes, character. And I've got another face uh, here, which I'm not too sure. That's a little Fight Club is. reference there. There's okay. a little Brad Pitt one. Um, yeah. There's other little eyes and faces around the place. It's just... Looking to okay, so <laughs> we'll move on to the other paintings because I don't want to leave them out. Okay. Um, should we go into this one first? Yeah. Yeah. Now, it's <clears throat> very, I mean, it's a similar style. You've got three of them here. Yeah. Um, so the process was the same? Yeah, same process, yeah. This is the first one I did, actually, of the three. Okay. Um, so, again, it's the, the, the 50s, 60s old rabbit kind of character that you see. Um, again, defaced, melting away. This one looks like it's, it was originally supposed to be getting carried away by this, the, the wolf character. Ah, oh, okay. So, yeah. Yeah, I see. That's kind of that's how they match together. So yeah, there's definitely, you see a rabbit, but then you look, actually, he is being sort of pulled away. Trent. Yeah, <laughs> against his will. It's very scared. <laughs> yeah, a little bit, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, so what it, um, inspired you to do these three together? I mean, was it, it was supposed to tell a story, first of all? 
Kind of, yeah. yeah. Originally, yeah, the two, the two together, two contrast okay. characters together um, of the kidnapped rabbit. I see some mushrooms here. What, what's this about? Um, no real reference, really. <laughs> just, just as a, again, a bit of an iconic image, really, is the mushrooms. So, okay. yeah. <laughs> Wicked. Um, so, what inspired you to do these three pieces of art together? Um, I wanted to do a retro kind of style, mm -hmm. again, mixing the old with the new, and um, I just really, really was dying to get some big, bold, bright colours in. Mm -hmm. So, these are one of the biggest pieces I've I've done on 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 canvas. So. Yeah, I was just dying to get out there, full up something completely full with colour. And um, yeah. I, I really like them. They're very eye catching. Yeah, and nice. um, when do you know? The thing is, I wouldn't know when to stop with a colour. No. <laughs> how do you how do you yeah. stop yourself? I kind of I kind of do have to stop myself yeah. halfway through and think, okay, that's enough now. I think I've I've done enough. Because otherwise you start to lose too much, I that's find true. if you just keep going over and over and over. <laughs> Should we look at the last piece then? Yes, yes. let's go. Let's go over. Okay, so this is another one of your series paintings. Mm -hmm. um, what, how does it link to the other two there? Um, it's kind of the same style. It's not so much the story of the, the wolf and the rabbit with this one. Um, this is a slightly later one I did. Um, again, same style, but this is more of a, as opposed to a Disney kind of cartoon face, it's more of a, uh, like an ad ad advert kind of style face. So a typical kind of Mr. Pringle style influence with this one. So. I like the fact that I keep on seeing different things popping out of me every time I look at your yeah. your work. There's a clockwork orange, isn't there? Yes. Character there. Yeah, a little, yeah, a different one there. Another sort of Fight Club style one there as well. There's a few other hidden ones. Again, you kind of lose them a bit because they go over a few times. So you, that's what mm. I kind of like to see is like not showing directly a full face. Mm. So yeah. How do you find um, uh, Rich? balancing the creativity aspect of your work and the financial side i mean i know a lot of creative people that find it hard to balance that yeah it is it is hard sometimes sometimes it's harder than others um you just kind of again you've got to have that determination to keep on going for me it, it's it, it's never been and never will be about the money for me i know everyone says that but it, it really isn't for me it's just about me doing what i like to do and putting out there and making other people smile and you know, not taking it too seriously, but it, it can be difficult. You've just got to have the determination to keep on trying, not let it, money limit you, um, which does do for people. So. so do you sell your work to individuals or bin businesses or anything like that? Yeah, yeah. Um, not so much businesses, really. They don't, <laughs> they don't always <laughs> like it. But yeah, individuals, yeah, who are just looking for something new. Um, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of sales come from social networking sites, uh, Twitter in particular is a really powerful tool that I use a lot of, I get a lot of work from that. You were talking to me about a movement that you've got in Portsmouth, can you explain to the viewers a bit about that please? Yeah, the Free Art Friday yeah. kind of is quite a recent thing that's come up in the last few years um, that started off in Portsmouth where a Friday morning or a Friday afternoon on my way to my day job I'll just leave a piece of work in the street or in the town in the city for, for someone to find. Um, yeah, with obviously my, the few details in the back explaining that this is free, just just take it, and it, it brightens up people's day. You know, they see that there; they don't necessarily have to take it, but they see that there, and they think, you know, that just it's a bit of something out the out the norm. So, do people do people do people respond to you from from the paintings that you've left? Yeah, which is the best thing about it. That yeah, must that, be yeah, yeah. That, that's got my details there. So yeah, people find me afterwards and. You know, and just thank them, thank me for, for giving something for free. Okay. You know, not having that money aspect there. So, what's yeah. the most interesting email that you've um, received from someone? Um, I had one from just a, a teenager on his way to school um, <laughs> who told me he just he, he saw me put it down straight away and just picked it up and he said he couldn't fit it in his backpack because <laughs> it was it was too big. So he just carried it around school all day with him and yeah, and he just thanked me for again for for giving something away. So. Oh, that's mm. sweet. Mm. <laughs> um, what's your main purpose of your work? Is it to change people's perspectives on how they view things? Yeah, I'd say so, a little bit. Yeah, it's definitely got that aspect there of just, you know, noticing it there and maybe looking into, you know, the, the underlying reasons of, of some of the, the, the corporations and, and cartoons that, that are out there at the moment. Um, but it's really just there, it's, it's, I don't take it as seriously as, as some other people do, so it's just there as a bit of fun. Yeah. It's something not sensible as, as some of the paintings out there now, so it's just something a little bit different and to make people laugh. So.
<laughs> have, have you got any, um, where can people see your work? Have you got any exhibitions lined up or anything like that? Um, there's a few things unconfirmed at, at the moment, a few things possibly happening in London, a few things maybe down home in, in Portsmouth as well happening. So yeah, watch this place on the, on the website. Good, <laughs> yeah. we'll check it out. <laughs> Do you just go in? Do you just go into it like you're not planning? You're just going in? No, yeah. Apart from like yeah. the little stencils. Oh, yeah, because they're more your. Yeah, yeah, but it's just literally just. Weird. There's something. Is that... anything written or anything? I was like just that? about to say they start off as words, but then it's yeah. sometimes it's just oh, I'll just try and write something really quick. So yeah. Yeah, they are little little phrases things, but a lot of it is just because I don't want to have a whole word or a whole face. So yeah. it's like, yeah. It's it's Little better bits. to be like that, then people can make up their own minds, can't they? It's spot on. That's exactly it. Yeah, exactly it. Yeah. Like a word there, then they'll just be drawn to... Yeah, that's why I didn't want to put a particular word in yeah. what you're saying there. Yeah, just... Just humming to himself or that's something. It. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Thank you, Rich. Um, <laughs> we are now off to the gallery to see some of the work that you've sent in. Rich, it's been such a pleasure to have you here today and I've really enjoyed speaking through your art. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's great. <laughs> Keep that work coming in and until next week, I'll see you soon.